Yo, hey guys, thank you for watching this video. So in this video, you are going to learn about how to promote your Lazada dropshipping products by using Facebook. So kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel. Thanks for your support. Let's learn something really, really powerful over here. What are we going to learn in this lecture are how to target our competitors, customer. How are we going to sell to our competitors, clients? How to determine which age group and gender of client base are buying our products and how to laser focus on exactly on people that need our products. Let's start learning. So just go to your Facebook page and click on manage ads. Or you can Google Facebook insight tools. Google will also direct you to there. Just click on the top left column over here and click on audience insights. So over here, you get to see so many valuable informations that are able to increase the successful rate of your business. Well, do not panic. I will guide you step by step on how each of these things works. On the left hand side, you get to choose which country, age and also other options of people to target. For example, I want to start a jewelry business in the United States. So I just key in US in the location column and enter jewelry at the interest column. So it will show me that people that are buying jewelry in US, 77% are women and 23% are men. And 26% of women age from 25 to 34. 21% from age 35 to 44 are the people that are buying it mostly. So if I want to target this group of people at the age column, I might want to put 25 and above. And the gender will be woman. Alright, what about Malaysia? Let's have a look who is buying most of the jewellery in Malaysia. As you can see over here, 65% of women are buying jewellery compared with 30% men. And the age range for women that buy jewellery will be 18, which is 84% from the total age group. So if you want to sell jewellery, this age group is definitely must be targeted. You also get to see the job title, relationship status and also education level of this group of people. I do not really find this part here very useful. What I really want to draw your attention is the page likes tab. Once I click it, I can straight away get to know the most popular pages in Facebook that related to jewelry that people like. For example, we can see Pandora, which is a very famous jewelry brand, and other pages like EJ Style, QQ Baby Shops. What we can do is that we can target people that like Pandora or others page that related to jewelry over this session over here. This page basically tells us that yes, I'm interested in jewelry. And now what I want to do is to change and just target the woman. And set the age to 25 and above. Now we see the demographic change and maybe the page likes will be different as well. Because we are looking at different gender and age as well. So yeah, we have a different stuff over here. Jachila, I don't even know what is this. And by the way, if you click on the link, it will bring you to the page and you can see what it likes. And by doing this, you get to have a spark of ideas of what people are actually interested in. And you also get to know how to target them. All right, I will see you on the next lecture. Facebook page is just like your company. You can showcase your products, do advertisement. People can also visit your company and get to know a lot more about what actually you are doing. And it also able to help you to rank on Google so people can be much more easier to see your shop when they type in the product's name. Well, um, we are not going to discuss about SEO and how to rank your business on Google in this course, but um, I will do it at another course. Now, setting up your Facebook page is fairly easy. But there are a few things that I would like you to take note. Alright, just go to create a page tab. Over here, you get to have two options. 
business or brand, and community or public figure. Well, um, obviously, we are running a business, so business or brand suit us the best. So just press on get started and put down your page name and category. When you are done, just go on continue. So just key in all the information over here and press continue. Um, do not worry, you can always change things after this. You can upload your photos over here if you have it now or skip it and upload later. Now, congratulations, um, you have created your Facebook page and you can start uploading some of your products, photos and also some information about your business now. Well, everything is pretty much um, straightforward over here. I will see you on the next chapter. Hey, my dear entrepreneurs, I'm sure that you have learned a lot of new information in this course. In this lecture, you are going to learn how to set up your Facebook advert account. The very first thing that you need to do is to go to this create ads button. And you should be able to see things similar like this. Why I say similar? Because um, Facebook is updating like way too fast. But the, um, I mean, they might change um, a bit from here and there. But the layout should be about this. Or you can just Google at set up Google advert account. And you should be able to get directed to here. All right, I'm going to see you on the next chapter. Yo, hey guys, another very exciting lecture over here. We are going to learn about the fundamental of how to make a Facebook ads that able to drive traffic to your business. Well, there are a lot of ways to do this. Some are more complex than another. Over here, I'm just going to show you the most fundamental of Facebook ads that able to not only generate traffic to your store, but also driving in potential buyer. So now let's get started. First thing first, you go to your page and click on create ads. Your ads manager should show something like this. Why I say should look something like this. The reason is because Facebook is always updating so fast. So it may change a bit here and there. But the overall layout should be about this. And over here, you have a lot of things that you can use. But what we are really going to use here is something called traffic. What it does is that it will send more people to a destination, which is your shop or off Facebook, such as um, your website, apps or messenger. You can name this campaign or whatever name you like and I highly recommend you to do so as you have plenty of campaign or ads that you are going to do it down the road. And you will not be able to differentiate which is which. So to make it much more organized, you need to name this campaign. So feel free to name your campaign as campaign 1 or, or whatever name that you want. After that, just press on continue. Over here, you can see tons of different parameters over here. And what I really want to draw your attention to is this audience section over here. It is really, really important that you set this right. If not, you are just going to waste your money on investing in Facebook marketing. What we want to do with our ads is to show our ads to people that are interested and potentially going to buy our products. And it is not just some random people so it is very important that your ads is laser focused. So pay careful attention with these steps. Just for demonstration purpose, my business is about selling wedding dress. So the location obviously is in Malaysia. By using the Facebook Insight tools, I get to know that people that buy wedding dress mostly are females that age 35 to 65 and mostly are women. You can select language, you can also use English and Bahasa. For now, I will just stick with English. The next column is super, super, super important. I've done some 
research regarding where regarding where people are looking for their wedding dress and also by using the Facebook Insight tool, I get to know the Facebook page that these people like too. So in detail targeting, what it does is that it is specifically target people with certain demographic interests or behavior. So you really have to watch the Facebook Ninja Tricks lecture in order to get all this information. Another thing that I would like you to take note is that the audience size. I mean, it is good to have a niche product that targeting a niche market, but sometimes if the potential reach are too low, like um, below 50,000, generally we do not want to try to sell the products unless you have a very high confidence with the products. As we are still doing experiment with our products, whether it will work or not, so the more people we can reach, the better chances we can get to sell our products. So these are the pages that people that are looking for wedding dress will go to. What your ads are going to do now, it will target people that in these four interests. Now let's go to placement. This is also a very important section. I generally find that Messenger and this native banner in stream video is not really that helpful. Instagram and Facebook has a much more stronger effect in bringing in sales. I mean, you can always have a try on those, but for beginner, I would suggest you to stick with what is proven that is already working. I don't want you to spend like a um, couple of hundreds or even thousands of ringgit in doing things that is new and um, it's not proven success. Okay, now daily budget. I would say a good 5 to 10 ringgit is a good start for a um, experiment products. You can also scale it up when you see your sales start coming in. So just let put it 10 ringgit at the moment. When you are done, just click on continue and I will see you in the next chapter. Couple of things that I want you to take note over here. Number one is the ad's name. This is my first ad, so I'm going to name it as Everwant. Then I want you to come to the format section. Typically, I will choose single image unless your product will only be able to sell and explain with video. If not, I will suggest you to use image to start with. Just keep things as simple as possible. Now scroll down a bit lower and add the image of your products. Just let me crop it a bit to make it look a bit greater. Well, um, this is not the best photos. It, it is just for demonstration purpose. Alright, it's done. Now just scroll down a bit more. You get to see exactly how is your photos going to appear in your ads. The next thing that you really want to do is to insert your website URL. So when people click on your ads, it will directly bring them to your Lazada shop where you are selling exactly this long black dress. Nothing else. When you click on these ads, it will bring you to the website that is going to show exactly these products. They are going to show you the products that you are selling exactly same as the advertisement. So if the link that they click is bringing them somewhere else, then your client may just leave your online store. For them, it will just like a fraud or you are actually cheating their money. All you need to do is to go to your Lazada shop now, click on the products that you want to sell to promote, and copy the link above here and paste it over here. The next thing that you can do is to put some text and headline that are able to catch people's attention, your customer attention. It is always good to set urgency such as like um, only 50 units left or this promotion is until a certain date only as they will create a powerful urgency for people to buy immediately. So when everything is done, just click on confirm. Alright, your first ad is going to be up and running very soon. The thing about starting a business is always a trial 
and error. And this same goes with marketing as well. Different products will engage their different buyers differently. So in Facebook marketing, we have something called split test. It is basically you are running everything the same, just that you change the ads slightly, like you might want to change the products, photos, or the headline. And then analyze which ads are able to draw more traffic and eventually, hopefully, it's able to generate more income to your business. Well, it sounds um, complicated, but it is actually a very simple process. And do not worry, I guarantee that you are going to understand everything and I'm going to take you step by step on this. So just go back to our previous ads. You might put campaign one or whatever is it, but um, I name it as ad set one, so I won't be confused later on. You will see a button says duplicate over here. Now, what it really does is that it will duplicate whatever is inside ad sets one, including the photos, the headlines, just every single thing. So just press on it and click on existing campaign and click on duplicate. So you will get to see a new ad set one copy on your screen now. And just click on it. I want I want to name it as ad set two. All right, let's close it. So now you get to see ad set two over here. Just click on ad set two. So this is the original ads that we worked on in the previous lecture. Now we are going to change some of the information on these ads. One very important thing that you need to know when we're doing split test is that do not do more than one changes at a time as it will be very hard to differentiate which changes is making the impact. For example, if you change the color and the headline and it increases the sales, so which one is actually making the impact? The color or the headline or both? So I want to change the photos only. Just go to the image and choose a photos that you would like to put on. When you're done, you can press on Publish. Let's go back over here. So under my Ads 1, I will have Set 2 and Set 1. Ads Set 1 is the original ads with the photos of a black dress and Ads Set 2 will be everything the same except the photo with two dresses on it. So if ad set 2 drive more sales or traffic to my store, then I know that two dresses photos are able to attract more people to my shop. So I will increase the budget on the next ads. And this is how you do your speed test.